organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, we have an update on the death that occurred on Capitol Street. And later, UISG calls for a revote for one Senate race. It served the students. And the biggest, biggest uh, uh, insight that we get is from our students. So I would tell people, one, if they can't show up and vote. And find out if Iowa football has finally made their decision on next season's starting quarterback. Lots of rain coming our way. Find out more in weather coming up. We have all that and more coming up. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good morning and thanks for tuning in to this live edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Becca Scadden. We have an update on the death that occurred on Capitol Street this weekend. According to Iowa City Police, the death has been ruled a homicide based on evidence of severe trauma to the victim. The victim's name is not being released until the family is notified and the identification is confirmed. The Iowa City Police Department is continuing their investigation. Stick with Daily Iowa TV for further coverage. And the University of Iowa student government announced a revote for their LGBTQ constituency senator position. Daily Iowa reporter Ryan Scott has more on what went wrong. On April 20th, the University of Iowa student government held its LGBTQ constituency Senate race. Unfortunately, it did not go according to plan. Because um, we want to make sure that the person who is elected has the majority of the LGBTQ students who are there voting in support. UISG admits that a procedural error on their end led to a revote for the LGBTQ Senate constituency seat. Once the vote happened, uh, one person did receive more votes than the others. But the issue became that that individual did not receive a majority of the vote. The process went awry when UISG confirmed a candidate before a runoff vote could be held. Aside from the revote, candidate Tristan Schmidt expressed his concerns about the voting process. My concern is I often had folks who were part of the community who couldn't make it, but they asked me if it was online voting and I had to tell them no, it's you have to be in person, which I think is one part of the problem. Because the election is for representation of the LGBTQ plus community here at the University of Iowa, those that are not affiliated or identify as part of that community are discouraged from voting by the UISG. It has, it's so finite, the time and place for voting, and not everyone can make it to this. Because these seats are intended to serve certain communities, specific communities, uh, we suggest that individuals not vote for those seats if they do not identify, because a lot of those seats will be held accountable by members of the community. The Senate race was between Tristan Schmidt, John Seydorf, and Jacob Hyde. Both candidates, Seydorf and Hyde, chose not to comment when asked. The revote will take place this Thursday at 5.30 p.m. right here in the IMU. Reporting from the Iowa Memorial Union Building, Ryan Scott, Daily Iowa TV. UI officials received a report of sexual misconduct yesterday. According to the Department of Public Safety, the sexual assault occurred early Sunday morning. The report also noted that the assault was committed by an acquaintance. Sexual assaults can be reported to the UI Office of the Misconduct Response Coordinator on their website. Victims are encouraged to do this and seek immediate medical attention. And the, and the University Housing and Dining has continued to enforce their policies regarding drug uses in the residence halls. Reporter Lauren Varell spoke with an official from University Housing and Dining to find out how prevalent drug usage is in the residence halls. Over the course of the year, University Housing and Dining sees from 40 to 70 drug violations across the residence halls. So, um, typically in the residence halls we do see more policy violations at the beginning of the year in general um, and that would be accurate for drug violations as well too. The housing staff works to inform residents of these policies through having it written in the Code of Student Life, meetings during orientation, a mandatory policy review meeting in the beginning of the school year, multiple posters throughout the residence halls, and continual communication and policy enforcement through the resident hall assistance. So anytime we have any sort of drug or alcohol violation within the residence hall, there's always a monetary fine that's associated with that. That's meant to match the similar type of fine a student might receive if they were cited in possession of drugs off campus. 
There's also a status sanction with the university. So, and then we have to make considerations on if that student and that drug behavior is uh, a threat to the community. And According to Greg Thompson, interim director for resident education, the most prevalent drug used in the resident halls is marijuana. I think part of that is because the use of marijuana in and of itself creates indicators that it's easy to identify. So there's the smoke, there's this uh, pretty distinct smell that happens. Uh, much uh, contrary to what students believe, it's pretty hard to mask the smell. The housing staff is looking to continue to educate students regarding drug usage and how they can support students and the community when they do have instances of drug usage in the residence halls. Reporting from the University of Iowa's residence halls, this is Lauren Varell, Daily Iowa TV. Well, it seems like walking around campus, more and more people are sitting out on the Pentecrest enjoying the nice weather, and I, for one, am hoping we're going to see more this week. So I'll over to Sydney Zatz in the weather studio with more. Sydney? Well, Becca, I am loving this weather, and looking outside this morning is partly cloudy in Iowa City, and the capital is shining and will have temps in the low 50s. But looking to the rest of the forecast, Tuesday afternoon we can see cloudy skies with temps sitting in the high 60s. As we continue into the evening, we could see a 30% chance of showers with temps in the low 70s. Moving on to Wednesday morning, you'll want to make sure you have your umbrella with you as we can see a 60% chance of thunderstorms with temps in the low 60s. As we move into the day, we can see up to an 80% chance of storms, and Thursday we could see a 40% chance of showers with temps in the mid 50s. Friday will be a nice day to go out and sit on the Pentecrest as we can see temps in the high 60s, and temps will drop down into the low 50s throughout the weekend as we could see a 60 to 70% chance of showers. However, we will see that some pop back through on Monday as we have temps in the high 50s. That's all I have for you this week. Becca, back to you. Thanks, Sydney. And have you ever wanted to watch your boss play the bongos or maybe see a coworker shred a solo? Well, this summer you may have the opportunity. Daily Iowa TV's Joe Fisher has more. The corporate battle of the bands is taking team building exercises and dialing them up to 11. This competition will feature a showdown of bands whom at least half of their members are employees at their respective companies. It's an amateur competition, so no paid pros are allowed. As for genres of music, if last year's competition is any indication, nothing is off limits. We had a little bit of everything. Um, rock and roll, certainly. You know, um, we had a band play Green Day. There was, of course, Taking Care of Business. Anyone is eligible to participate. Last year saw bands from an electric company, insurance agency, and a lip balm manufacturer. Even CBS2 News anchor Scott Sanborn got on the drums for the band Newsflash. To take part in this competition, bands must submit an entry form and a three-song demo video. Then the battle is on. There will be a preliminary qualifier featuring 16 of the chosen entrants. From there, judges will choose the six bands that move on to the finals. The winning band gets a traveling trophy, $1,000 for a charity of their choice, a gig at our Coolest Places to Work event, and of course bragging rights. Submissions for this year's competition aren't due until June, so there's still time to find that hidden talent around the workplace. From Iowa City, I'm Joe Fisher, Daily Iowan TV. Well, Iowa football had a big weekend this weekend. Let's toss over to Taylor Cassie in the sports studio with more. Taylor? Well, it was a full weekend for Hawkeye sports and will continue to be a busy week. But one sport will be dying down until August. Iowa football concluded their spring season this past Friday and will now break until the start of camp. But there are still many questions offensively next season for Iowa football, and the spring game did not show many answers for the team. Mary-Kate Harrion has more on one of those positions. Once the 2016 season ended, the million dollar question was who was going to be Iowa's next starting quarterback. But after three interceptions in the spring game, the team and fans will still be waiting on that answer if it will be junior Tyler Wiegers or sophomore Nathan Stanley. I think they're both doing some good things, but they're, they're both competing well. And my guess is they're both going to improve a lot coming out of this 15-day practice session. So, you know, what they can do now between uh, uh, now and the start of preseason camp, they have a chance to really advance, I think, and improve, go back, look at the tapes from the entire spring, and then hopefully uh, we'll see a jump here when we get going in August. Competition raises the level of, raises the level of performance of everybody, so just, just use that to feel you and try to do the best you can. I mean, yeah, just... Just welcome, welcome competition, and Tyler and I are both just trying to get better every single day. 
being the backup quarterback to then being passed up by true freshman Nathan Stanley. Tyler Riegers is now finally ready to get that chance to fight for the title of Iowa starting quarterback. I mean, you just got to, you know, get back to work and go to work every day and keep improving and focusing on yourself. And, you know, you just got to keep, you know, that mindset, keep pushing forward. And, um, you know, it's just great to be in, in this position, compete for a job. Very blessed to do that. You know, a lot, a lot of people get that opportunity. So you just got to keep uh, focusing on yourself and moving forward. You know, Tyler was a backup two years ago. So, you know, both guys are kind of in that same, same group. And um, to that point, we had to make a call last year, and we just made that decision. And uh, we're not looking back on that one. And, um, you know, so we'll just we'll let it all go. And But, yeah, at some point, we're going to have to have a winner. That's at every position, that's pretty much the same. Now that spring ball has come to a close, the quarterback competition will be pushed into summer and into the start of camp where Nathan and Tyler will keep battling it out until that final decision has been made. Reporting from Connect Stadium, this has been Mary-Kate Herrian for Daily Iowan TV Sports. It will be very exciting leading up to the Hawkeyes' first game against Wyoming to see which of the two quarterbacks will win the starting spot. Although Iowa football will be put on pause, former Iowa football players will have a very exciting and emotional week this week with the NFL Draft beginning on Thursday. The Hawkeyes with the most eyes on them at this year's draft will be 2015 Jim Thorpe Award winner Desmond King, tight end George Kittle who performed very well at the Combine and quarterback C.J. Beathard. We will have full updates on where those players and the rest of the Hawkeyes all end up after the weekend. Also stay tuned for the rest of this week's as we will continue with our NFL prospect interviews. The men's tennis team was able to finish off their regular season strong on Sunday as they faced their last two matches here in Iowa City. Liv Corbett was there to tell us more. It's a beautiful day here at the Hawkeye Rec and Tennis Center and what better way to enjoy it than with two big wins over Michigan State and the University of North Dakota. Not just that, we're also celebrating senior day here for Iowa men's tennis. Any, anytime you get two wins uh, in a day, it's always is nice, especially uh, this morning at noon against Michigan State. To, to get another Big Ten win um, was, was great. I mean, we continued our strong play in doubles. I'm very happy we got two wins, especially against Michigan State. Um, but it's also sad to play your last home match. Senior day is always one to bring out the emotions, but with both players originating all the way from Sweden, Iowa has become home and the team has become family. I've had so much fun here at Iowa over the last few years. And while it's been tough, it's been so much fun along the way. I met so many good people, teammates, staff. And the biggest thing is the team environment. We don't really have that in Sweden. So it's been four great years. You know, you couldn't ask for two better guys to have on your team. And, you know, we'll be sad to, to see them go. Co-captains Nils Hollistrand and Robin Hayden were able to prove their importance to the team by ending their last ever home match on a high note, contributing to the last wins of the regular season. You know, Nils and Robin having it be their senior day, Nils getting a win at third doubles, and then um, Robin getting a win at, at number one doubles as well. So for them to get wins today and to us win for, as a team, it's a great day for us. Although it might have been the seniors last time here at home, they won't be going back to Sweden just yet, as they will be preparing for Big Tens coming up at the end of the month. Reporting for Men's Tennis, this has been Olivia Corbett with Daily Iowan TV Sports. After easing past Michigan State 7-0 and North Dakota State 4-0, the team will now travel to Indiana to take on Penn State this Thursday at 2.30 for the start of the Big Ten Championships. Tune in tomorrow as we will have recaps from both Iowa baseball and softball from their matchups tonight. And hopefully we will see some different teams as both had some very disappointing weekends. Becca, back to you. Thanks, Taylor. And with finals fast approaching, those living in the residence halls will need to move out soon. University Housing and Dining emailed all those in the residence halls with move out instructions specific to their residence hall. More information can be found at the University Housing and Dining website. And that'll do it for this Tuesday morning broadcast. Make sure to tune in every morning at 8.30 a.m. where we bring you the latest in Johnson County. And don't forget to pick up a copy of The Daily Iowan. From all of us here at Daily Iowan TV, thank you for watching and have a great day, Iowa City.